Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So this is the seventh part of the identification of bodily fluids. We were talking about blood and uh, in this video we'll be looking at the immunochromatographic assay which is usually done on the basis of human glycophorin A protein. In the previous video we have discussed about human hemoglobin protein uh, identification through the immunochromatographic process. If you haven't watched that video, please uh, go back to the playlist and firstly watch that video so that you'll be understanding this, this video in a better way. Let's discuss the identification of human glycophorin A protein through the immunochromatographic assay. Like the human hemoglobin protein, human glycophorin A protein also uh, contains its immunochromatographic kits are also available uh, which are Resid blood independent forensics. So this is the manufacturing company which provides immunochromatographic kits that identifies the human uh, blood through the human glycophorin A protein. I hope you are understanding it well. Uh, so what these kits do, they use antibodies that recognize human GPA or glycophorin A protein. Correct? Now, what is GPA or the glycophorin A? It is a transmembrane protein on the human erythrocyte membrane. Now, what is a transmembrane protein? So, please have a look at this figure. This is the image of the glycophorin A protein. It is a transmembrane protein because it is present in the extracellular domain, passes through the cell membrane to the intracellular domain as well. Or it, it can be called as a cytosolic domain. So, it is present both in the outer as well as the inner domains of the cell. Hence, it is termed as transmembrane protein. Now, let's understand its principle or the working. What happens here is the human anti-glycophorin anti A antibody, which is labeled, it, it reacts with the glycophorin A antigen, which is present in the sample, which we have to detect as the human blood. Now, if this antigen is present, it will bound with the anti-glycophorin A antibody to form anti-glycophorin A antibody antigen complex and this will be the unbound anti-GPA antibody. Now this complex will further bind to the immobilized antibody which is specific to the other epitope of these, this GPA antigen which is in the test zone while the antiglobulins are immobilized in the control zone which will detect the unbound anti-GPA antibody which will tell that the particular kit is working properly or not. This complex will impart a color to the test zone and through this color we will be uh, coming to know that uh, this particular sample is human blood. So let's understand this in a procedural form. So the samples are extracted in extraction buffer and thus are loaded in the sample wells. Firstly, we'll extract the sample through the extraction buffer which is also provided by with the kits and they are loaded in the sample wells. Now, what happens in the sample well? The GPA in a blood sample, it is mixed with labeled anti-GPA antibody as we learned here. So, this binding to the labeled anti-GPA antibody form a labeled antibody GPA complex, right? So, this complex is formed. Now, at the test zone, the labeled antibody GPA complex, it binds to the immobilized anti-GPA antibody to form a labeled antibody GPA antibody sandwich. Now, this labeled complex, it binds to other epitope of this particular GPA antigen. So, to form a sandwich of antibody antigen and antibody complex. This will be present at the test zone. Now, at the control zone, the labeled anti-GP antibody, it binds to the immobilized anti-globulin and it captures the unlabeled antibodies. So, antibody and GPA resent the antibody and GPA protein respectively. So, this happens in the control zone. Now, you can get the results as positive and negative like this in this kits. So, we load the sample in the sample well in the control zone. The antibodies are immobilized. So, if the sample contains the glycophorin A antigen, it will bind to the, it will form a complex with an antibody, and it will be captured in the test zone here, where the immobilized antibody is present to form a sandwich of antibody antigen antibody complex. In the control zone, the antiglobulins are present, which captures the unbound antibodies. So, for positive results, you will get vertical red lines. 
in both the test zone and the control zone which will which will give the results to be positive and in the negative result you'll get a vertical line only in the control zone and you'll not get any kind of line in the test zone so now these are the key points so the sensitivity of resid kit can be as low as 100 nanoliter of human blood so you can detect human blood in this much small quantity also so you can infer from here that this kit is sensitive it gives reliable results then the species specificity studies showed no cross reactivity with, with various animal species including non human primates so there is no cross reactivity also and further biological fluid specificity studies it revealed that the kit is not responsive to other human biological fluids so we can infer from here that only the blood can be detected human blood can be detected through this kit and no other biological fluid like the semen saliva urine milk amniotic and vaginal fluid they cannot be detected through this immunochromatic graphic kit of human uh, glycophorin a antigen so this was all about this video i hope that you all understood about the working of the kits immunogra immunochromatographic kits if you have any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section below so we'll be meeting in the next video till then you can study these topics and further revise the subject if you like this video please give a thumbs up you can also share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel for regular updates thank you so much for joining us stay tuned